Hi everybody, welcome to the video where I'm going to show you how to find your inspiration in just five steps. Step one, do nothing. Do absolutely nothing. If you're lost for inspiration, don't try to force it. Do absolutely nothing. And by nothing, I mean properly nothing. Switch off the computer, switch off the phone, go away from people for as far as you possibly can. Don't talk to anybody, don't do anything, don't think anything. Just do nothing, completely switch off. You'll find that your creativity will start to come back to you. You'll find little bits of inspiration that hit you. This happens all over the place. For example, Albert Einstein came up with some of his best mathematical theories when he was working in a really boring, mindless job. You always see people who are bored doing the most creative things. If you don't believe me, look in the back of a classroom full of students. The student who is the most bored is the student who's got the most crazy, beautiful doodles on his notebook in front of you. So do absolutely nothing. The more bored you are, the more likely it is that ideas will flow. Don't force it. Okay, step two. Find a relaxing place. Different studies show that the more relaxed you are, the more likely you are to come up with new ideas. So find a place that's most relaxing to you. Maybe it's in bed, maybe it's in the shower, maybe it's even in the bathroom. I know one of the top creative directors from Canada who will stop in the middle of meetings, go to the bathroom and use the toilet just to come up with new ideas because that's where he feels most relaxed. Wherever you feel most relaxed is where you should go to come up with ideas. So yes, this means that if you're stuck for inspiration, I'm advising you to spend all day in bed or all evening in the bathtub or whatever it is that you do that's more relaxing. So imagine that you can say the next time you're sleeping in late, oh, I'm being creative. You've got my permission to do that. Give it a try. Now on to step three. Place restrictions on yourself. Sometimes we just can't find inspiration because we've got so many different options. We've got all of this equipment, we've got all of this stuff, and we can do pretty much anything. So place some restrictions on yourself. It could be a financial restriction. So maybe you try to do your idea for less than $10. Maybe it could be a time restriction. Try to do your idea in less than 20 minutes. Maybe it could be another kind of re restriction. Like maybe you can only do it whilst you're dressed as a pirate. Or maybe you can only come up with your idea whilst you're doing karate chops. Whatever it is, any kind of restriction that you can put on yourself will help you creatively. Let's look at step four. Make the first mark. This is something that I learned when I interviewed Jake Nichol for my book, The Awesome Department, and Jake knows a lot about creativity because he's the co-founder of Threadless, one of the best small businesses in America, so he really knows what it takes. And he told me it's so important to make the first mark. What he means by that is when you're doing something, maybe you've got a blank sheet of paper in front of you, it's so important that you're not staring back at that blank sheet of paper. Put the first mark down on the page, get started somewhere. If you're writing music, play the first note. If you're writing a novel, write the first word. If you're building a website, do the first graphic, something, anything. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. Put that first mark down on your sheet of paper and see where it takes you. Everything gets going once you get started. Now finally, step five, save ideas for later. One of the best ways to ensure that you never run out of ideas is to make sure that you save all of your ideas when you're inspired so that when you're having a bit of a creative drought, you can go back and be triggered by all of the things that used to inspire you. For me, I take notebooks everywhere that I go and I'm constantly writing down little fragments of ideas. Whenever I see a little bit of inspiration, it could be something like a funny spelling mistake that I notice creates a new word and I think maybe that could be something. I don't always know how to use my idea right there and then, but I know that I can always go back to it when I'm feeling the need to be inspired. This is a sort of preventative measure. It means that even if you are having your worst creative day ever, you've always got 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 old ideas to turn to, and then your creative spirit will be flowing, your inspiration will come back to you, and it will remind you of what made you so creative in the first place. So if you're constantly saving your ideas for later, it means that you never have to worry about having a dry spell of creativity ever again. 
I really hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you're ever caught without inspiration, try watching this again and seeing if any of these ideas help you. Please share it with your friends and tell people if you like this video because it really means a lot to me. See you next time.